Hey everybody, we're going to talk a little bit about the 2018 Columbia Valley Stain Tooth Syrah. I'll turn it over to Chad to give us a little bit about the technical information. <laughs> I'm full of it. Uh, Absolutely. So we've got, again, three different vineyards in this Columbia Valley blend. Um, usually about 25-30% is our Stony Vine Vineyard down the rocks. It's plush, lush, um, with a little bit of that rock spunk. Uh, stone tree, which is co-fermented with a little of the Indian every year. Um, it's definitely the, the more fruit forward side of the wine. And then Breezy Smoke, which is a high elevation vineyard here at the base of the Blue Mountains at about 17, 1800 foot elevation we've been working with is fruit and I would say acid and structure um, to the wine. So they really are great and harmonious together. Do a little bit of whole cluster uh, fermentation, everything old is new again. So. Um, we find that it adds a little bit of white to mid palate, a stony vine, and adds to the aromatics. And then, you know, what are your thoughts on uh, co-fermentation with Viognier? I mean, well, yeah, good. yeah. I was actually going to ask you the question, but I'll oh, certainly, yeah. I'll certainly answer that because we've been something we've been doing now since, since 03? Yeah, or 03. Yeah, so I think I think was it 03 or did we start in 04? I think yeah. maybe 04, 04, if my memory serves me. It's been a few vintages, but uh, it's something we've been doing for a long time. Um, and we, I think it just it really build, builds beautiful aromatics into the wine. Um, I find that it brings out this, um, you know, Viognier is really known for its floral characteristic and it really kind of sure. brings out this almost kind of crushed violet characteristic out of the wine a lot of times. Which I think the Phelps clone is kind of inherent. Inherent with that. And you get a little bit of the orange blossom thing coming out inherently in that clone as well. But I think lifting the aromatics with the Viognier, it kind of really amplifies that. I think it also kind of polishes and rounds out some of the edge, off, takes a little bit of the edge off in the wine as well. Yeah. Um, cool. And scientifically uh, speaking, uh, it actually makes the wine darker, which does is kind of counterintuitive when you're putting white grapes in a red wine, but there's these things called cold factors, so you get resulting lots of darker, which is kind of cool. Blowing cool people's minds, man. Leaving it all up to the cofactor. <laughs> so. Hey, have you had some uh, interesting food that you've paired with the uh, stain tooth as of late? I love Syrah with lamb. It's one of my, I love lamb every yeah. time I get a chance. Um, and duck are a couple of my favorites. Uh, so yeah, we did uh, lamb chops recently on the grill. Nice. A little rosemary. A little rosemary, well. right on. You, you can't go wrong with lamb chops on the grill. And uh, charred mammal flesh on the grill Yeah, you know, it's just where it's at. And you get a little bit, like you say again, kind of some of those wild kind of gamey flavors, um, you know, tend to really go well, I think, with Washington Syrah. Yeah, um, and one thing I've noticed that uh, Syrah, in general, um, can stand up to a little heat, too. So don't be afraid to use a little bit of uh, cayenne, chili or kind of something. Like kind, of, you know. kind of punch it up a notch. So what was that? What was the what was the New Orleans chef that just, used to just don't get all the Bam Emerald on me? No, yeah, yeah, you know. no, that was just it was long before long before Emerald was a thing. Yeah, I remember watching NPR when I was a little kid. Bam! Cheers.